In this lecture, we'll introduce the concept of an image histogram and show how the histogram can be used to plot the frequency and cumulative frequency for the intensity values of an image. We'll also look at the histogram frequency plots for several images and suggest how the cumulative frequency curve might be used to enhance the contrast or exposure of an image. Well, here's a black and white or grayscale image of an old house. This image has 5,184 columns and 3,456 rows, or about 18 million pixels. And each pixel contains an 8-bit intensity value that is equal to some integer between 0 and 255. If we count the number of pixels that have an intensity equal to 0, and then count the number of pixels that have an intensity equal to 1, then those with an intensity equal to 2, and so on until we've counted all the pixels with an intensity equal to 255, then we could create a plot like this. This plot is called a histogram. It has a vertical bar at each integer location between 0 and 255, and the height of the bar tells us the number of pixels that contain the corresponding intensity. For example, at this location we find that there are roughly 244,000 pixels that have an intensity of 185. At this location, we find that there are about 100,000 pixels that have an intensity equal to 33. Well, sometimes it's convenient to divide the pixel counts by the total number of pixels and make a plot that looks like this. Now the height of each bar is the proportion of pixels that have a particular intensity. On one extreme, a proportion equal to 0 means that no pixels have the corresponding intensity. On the other extreme, we could have a proportion equal to 1, and that would mean that all pixels have that intensity. As an example, at this location, about 1.3%, 0.0136, of the pixels have an intensity equal to 185. At this location, about 0.47% of the pixels have an intensity equal to 90. Well, it's also instructive to show a plot of the cumulative frequency. The cumulative frequency plot shows the proportion of pixels that have an intensity that is less than or equal to a particular value. For instance, at this location, we can see that about 92.1% of the pixels have an intensity that's less than or equal to 189. At this location, we see that about 48.5% of the pixels have an intensity that's less than or equal to 112. The cumulative frequency always satisfies two important properties. First, the cumulative frequency is a non-decreasing function of intensity. And this means that the plot can't get smaller as it moves from left to right. It could stay at the same value, but it couldn't get smaller. Second, the cumulative frequency always ends with a value of 1 for the largest possible intensity. This has to be so, after all, because all of the pixels have an intensity that is less than or equal to the maximum intensity. Well, here's an example of the frequency plots for a dark image of the same old house. Notice that the frequencies are concentrated on the low intensities, and the cumulative frequency plot rises to a value of 1 far on the left side of the plot where the intensities are small. Now at this point it's instructive to think about what would happen if we used a curve with the same shape of the cumulative frequency plot as our contrast transformation. Because the cumulative frequency plot is above the diagonal line, all of the intensities in this image would be increased and the image would become brighter. Now here's an example of the frequency plots for a bright image of the same old house. Notice that the frequencies are concentrated on the high intensities and the cumulative frequency plot rises slowly over the low intensities and more rapidly over the larger intensities. Again, it's worthwhile to think about what would happen if we used a curve with the shape of the cumulative frequency plot for a contrast transformation. Because the cumulative frequency plot is mostly below the diagonal line, nearly all of the intensities in this image would be decreased and the image would become less bright. Well, here's an example of the frequency plots for a low contrast image of that same old house. 
Notice that the frequencies are concentrated on the mid-range intensities and that the cumulative frequency plot rises rapidly through those same mid-range intensities. Once again, let's think about what would happen if we used a curve with the shape of the cumulative frequency plot for a contrast transformation. Because the cumulative frequency plot is below the diagonal line for the low intensities and above the diagonal line for the larger intensities, a contrast transformation like this would increase contrast for this image. Finally, here's an example of the histogram plots for a high contrast image of the same old house. Notice that the frequencies are concentrated on the low and high and the cumulative frequency plot rises for low intensities and then again for high intensities. Because the cumulative frequency plot is above the diagonal line for low intensities and below the diagonal line for large intensities, a contrast transformation with this shape would decrease the contrast for this image. Well, let's think about what we've just seen. If we use the cumulative frequency plot for a dark image as its contrast transformation, evidently we'd make the image lighter. If we use the cumulative frequency plot for a light image as its tr contrast transformation, we'd make the image darker. If we use the cumulative frequency plot for a low contrast image as its contrast transformation, we'd give the image more contrast. And if we use the cumulative frequency plot for a high contrast image as a contrast transformation, we'd give the image less contrast. This general idea, using an image's cumulative frequency plot for a contrast transformation, is the central idea behind histogram equalization, and that'll be the topic for our next lecture.